Hello world! Curses and madness be upon you all, my dears. I was going to react live to the new Apex short, Promise, but real world technicalities made that impossible to do without being drowned out by chainsaws. Don't ask. Also, nobody wants to see my ugly mug, and live reactions personally tend to say very little or miss out a ton of points, so I've made sure to script the hell out of this video. You don't need to see me getting the feels, I've done that already. You're here for story analysis. And boy, is there plenty to dive into here. Starting with an energy crisis in the Outlands, with the kingdom that Horizon refers to likely being Olympus, but perhaps could even link back to the IMC, depending on the timeline. Having located Branthium crystals on the outer rim of a black hole, Horizon has to leave her son behind on Olympus and travel with Ash to retrieve as much as possible. Which proves to not need to be much, as a single crystal was enough for Ash to finally reveal that she actually was the traitor all along. How I love being right, eh? <laughs> not only is Ash being manipulated from above, but it seems that she has actually become jealous of Horizon's status or fame, standing forever in her shadow. And perhaps the energy crisis was a manufactured event, abusing Horizon's aspirations and Ash's jealousy to retrieve just as much Branthium as needed to build an artificial arc, maybe? There'd be no need for them to jettison Horizon using Ash if they were going to use the Branthium to solve the energy crisis as they said, right? Given the power of one crystal gives Horizon the ability to slingshot her ship out of the gravitational pull, and she must need some Branthium to power her abilities in-game, it seems very little of the substance is actually needed to generate enormous amounts of power, and the abilities it grants definitely line up somewhat with the space-time altering effects of the Ark, which will likely be key to her ultimate goal. So, having been stuck in the event horizon of the Black Hole for 87 years of real time, compared to her around 8-9 to nine months of experience time, and after testing over a thousand simulations, Horizon returns to find Olympus, or at least one of the balloon districts of Olympus, in a state of ruin, with a giant temporal anomaly at the centre of the wreckage. But the true tragedy is that her son has lived and passed away. Yet that in turn gives us an incredibly strong motivation and ultimate goal for Horizon to journey back into the past to keep her final promise. That said, this photo sequence kind of has to reflect the actual reality of her son's life, and especially death. Otherwise, her ultimate goal is kind of invalidated for naught, just to kind of clear that up. This could change if Horizon's arc is about realising that she shouldn't go back and change the past, but that sort of has way less emotional weight. The photo sequence likely is representing her imagination to an extent as well, but these storytelling cues will mean way more to us if they are actually true. Otherwise, it's just in the nine months she suffered mentally imagining such, which, duh, but it doesn't really do anything. She still suffers the same regardless. So, that's the short, basically condensed. Now I've just got a few loose ends to tie up. Firstly, this has to be Ash, literally can't be anybody else, given that the time frame of 87 years would only allow a simulacrum to be able to call Horizon an old friend. Ash's betrayal before breakfast line ties directly into her actions in the short, as we can see, and her question of what kid doesn't like ice cream even implies to me that she took care of Horizon's son after the event. There's elements of cinematography reflecting dialogue in there as well that indicate that Ash and Horizon were probably actually pretty close too, and Horizon considering herself daft over the betrayal implies that she truly trusted Ash, which apparently wasn't the best idea, but again suggests a close relationship. I would even totally be down with them being like ex-lovers, as this just makes the betrayal all the juicier and nastier to offer more emotional turmoil, but could also offer other avenues for possible reconciliation on both their parts given that emotional connection. However, I'm now uncertain about why Ash's head had to be thrown in the portal, as nobody seemed to want Horizon back, she was seemingly gotten rid of on purpose, and she managed to return on her own anyway. The codes that Ash holds don't seem necessary for finding the black hole again, given that we're shown that there is technology that can just detect Branthium itself, and it's going to be hard to lose a black hole, they're pretty big, right? But them seeking extra Branthium does make much more sense than retrieving Horizon. 
Also, as Blisk says, if we can trust him, he was stashing Ash away, which implies that someone was after her for more nefarious reasons, but this could again be further manipulation from the powers above them. Why exactly though, I don't think I can really say. The Arcadia rocket also seems to have landed on one of these Olympus districts, given the Season 7 info page, so it was never seemingly heading for the black hole in the first place. But this does explain why Crypto couldn't figure out where the rocket was going, as the balloon districts or platforms can travel between planets as we've seen. Perhaps the codes were needed to bring the wrecked balloon district out of orbit or from Samathi to the other planets, maybe. That said, these balloon platforms also seem to be a part of Olympus rather than the whole thing if you ask me, as they're nowhere near big enough to be a city or a map on their own, and Olympus itself has been shown to be far larger as you'd expect for a city in the sky. Horizon and Ash do initially launch from one of these platforms, and they're also very close to where Horizon is shown raising her son, which raises the possibility that Ash is also from Olympus, or at least Samathi. This would certainly tie into Ash welcoming us to Olympus as she awakens, along with the connection to Darian and Duardo, who may even be Horizon's grandchildren given this image, if we take it to be true. And that said, I do feel that Ash eventually is going to be made more sympathetic in this situation over time as well, perhaps learning that she was pushed to become a simulacrum, which would further the idea that I've raised here that she's actually just been a puppet of the powers that be all along. Blisk even gives Ash a mantra revolving around her own name before throwing her head in the portal, which could be him joining in on this dastardly scheme of manipulation. But looking to the future, I can see Horizon coming into immediate conflict with a character like Loba over her jump drive tech, as this might give her an edge in jumping back through time, but they could also bond over their shared simulacra situations, and perhaps share in their tech as well. If Darian and Duardo are related to Horizon, I can also see this brewing conflict between her, Lifeline and Octane, despite them likely getting on on a personal level, given Horizon's attitude. If Ash returns to the story, which I bloody hope she does, and Pathfinder hasn't gotten over his affection for her, I can see him clashing with Horizon over that as well. There's also plenty of characters such as Revenant, Loba, Wraith, Pathfinder, and potentially like Bangalore, who may also want to go back in time with Horizon for their own pretty obvious reasons, if she can ever reach that point. It is the end of her character arc, we really shouldn't rush to that. She shouldn't get there any time soon, but the drama will still most certainly unfold along the way, just like space-time under Fused Branthian. If you ask me, Promise is one incredibly strong offering from the Apex team, with Horizon and The Short, the first key work by the new Vancouver team, headed by lead writer Amanda Doiron, if that's how you pronounce that. Well done to you guys regardless. The intense motivations and emotional trauma really elevate this sci-fi nonsensery, reminiscent of Alien, Event Horizon and Final Fantasy VIII, a personal favourite, to a level of heartfelt glory that Apex seems to continually strive for, and I will forever be following along behind, ice cream in hand. Thank you for staying with me, dearies. I hope you enjoyed my brief thoughts on this brilliant new cinematic. But that's all from me for today, unless you can find me some Branthium. I've been Euclidean Vision, the emotional support. Take care of yourselves out there, teammates. And may the glorious light of Best Mama shine within you. Bye-bye. <laughs>